if you could just um, introduce yourself and um, and just tell us a little bit about um, about the project as well. This is sort of an overview of the project. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Steve Parks. I'm a, a research fellow uh, at Sheffield Hallam University. I'm based in the uh, Centre for Regional Economic and Social Research there. Um, my background is broadly in, in transport research, um, with my PhD up at um, Leeds in, in the Institute for Transport Studies there uh, around travel behaviour. Uh, and I've been involved in a kind of various projects since then, um, broadly around sustainability, um, kind of increasingly looking at, at transport within that and kind of active travel uh, again within that. Um, so things like walking, cycling, research. Hi, I'm Richard West. I'm a senior research fellow at the University of Central Lancashire. Uh, I've been researching transport and tourism, so leisure travel mostly, um, over the last nearly 20 years. Uh, and done studies for everyone from local sort of uh, enthusiast groups wanting to build cycle trails uh, to the Transport and Tourism Committee of the European Parliament. So uh, almost everybody. Okay. Yeah. Of course, um, with COVID, um, you know, leisure tra leisure travel probably was, was the one area that took the biggest hit. I would have thought, yeah. um, or at least the biggest change. Big, well, yeah. From 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 yeah, traveling everywhere by car or bus or travel, to traveling locally by bike or on foot you know yes yeah okay um and do you want to just give us then a bit of an, an overview of the, of the project yeah um so the project came about um because we responded to the the um call uh, from decarbonate around the road space reallocation um acti uh, activities that were happening uh, in response to the pandemic so there was a, a small kind of pot of funding made available for that and uh, myself and Richard kind of independently uh, submitted expressions of interest for that uh, for some funding from this this pot of money um, and then kind of after that first stage uh, expressions of interest we were um, matched up by uh, Decarbonate uh, to potentially try and take forward a, a co collaborative idea um, this was because our kind of initial proposals were quite kind of quite similar in the sense that um we wanted to look at um uh, we wanted to use a survey to examine behavior change in response to the pandemic and linked to the the road space reallocation measures that were, were put in place uh, so then me and richard worked together to kind of build up the the idea and um we we brought in our local authority partners so uh, that was Sheffield City Council and Lancashire County Council. Um, and uh, yeah, myself and Richard uh, brought a small team together to then um, apply for this sort of uh, this funding from Decarbonate. We were able to kind of apply for a, a slightly bigger pot of money um, from, from the fund uh, and were fortunately successful with that, which was great. Um, and that was back in, I think, July 2020. Um, and then the uh, the approach that we had was to um, undertake a longitudinal panel survey. Um, so we um, wanted to look at behaviour change over a, a, a longer period um, with the same people. Uh, so we had a survey that went out into the field in uh, September and October 2020. And this was kind of quite a substantive survey. Uh, and we asked people to look back to the first lockdown tell us how they were traveling just before that, how they were traveling during the kind of peak of those restrictions. And then as the restrictions were lifted, uh, and then we went back to those same people in the spring and summer of 2021 to ask them again, just a few questions around how they were still traveling uh, and, and whether they were using the measures that were still in place, um, just to kind of try and understand that kind of slightly longer term picture. Kind of interesting though, I suppose, even at that point, there's still huge amounts of uncertainty over travel. You, I think we kind of felt it would be a bit more settled by then. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, even then there was kind of still huge amounts of kind of churn and uncertainty with people's travel. Um, so I think we could have potentially gone even further uh, in terms of subsequent ways, but you have problems around kind of people falling off the, the you know, not wanting to complete further surveys and 
uh, there's a bit of a challenge with keeping people interested in these things. So, you know, partly one of the things we were looking at was what was the behaviour change impact of COVID. And I guess anecdotally, it was like at the time, you know, you just knew the numbers were going to have changed, the, the proportion of change was just going to be huge because, you know, it was kind of such a significant shift in the status quo. Um, so our kind of findings re did reflect that. Um, and uh, so I suppose that wasn't a kind of a huge surprise in a way. I think for us, one of the things was um, the the other thing we looked at was the use of the measure, the temporary measures, so the kind of temporary cycle lanes or the temporary pedestrianisation of roads that were put in place in both areas. Um, and there was kind of a massive amount of awareness of these measures amongst the sample. Kind of, I think it was, um, yeah, 88% in Sheffield were aware of that these measures were put, being put in place. Um, it was slightly less in Lancashire, 70% um, in Lancashire. Um, yet when it came to actually using them, the numbers were, were much lower. I think it was like down to like 32% of the sample overall had gone on to use at least one of these measures. So it kind of felt like there was a big gap between kind of, yeah, people were aware of them, but no one was really using them. Uh, on, you know, far fewer people than we expected were, were actually engaging with them. I think one of the things was that they just weren't in, they, the proximity to measures was was not that close really. So a lot of the Sheffield ones, for example, were in the city centre. But I think a lot of our sample were maybe not really travelling there, so not able to make use of them. Um, so there is there was kind of a question around kind of, were they in the right places? Could we maybe put some more in? Uh, so that people were engaging them with them a little bit more. Um, but overall, there was like there was a lot of support for the measures. Um, the measures that were used more frequently had higher ratings when we asked them, we asked the respondents to kind of rate them in terms of quality. Um, so there was a kind of link between the more frequently used measures and and how what the quality the perceived quality of them was. Um, we did kind of sort of discuss at the time about um, kind of preparedness for implementing these kind of measures. So Sheffield, um, which is in the South Yorkshire Combined Authority, has had a um, active travel commissioner in Sarah Story in place. And they were already doing a lot of kind of engagement, a lot of activities, um, looking to kind of increase the and improve the infrastructure around active travel uh, in South Yorkshire, um, whereas in Lancashire, it's kind of felt like it was a much kind of uh, it was much less progressed, and um, there was kind of a lot less activity around that. So it was kind of we did sort of discuss whether um, perhaps the kind of success of some of these measures was that they were maybe already being thought about at the mm. council level and the combined authority level. Um, so the pandemic was a chance to just kind of quite quickly implement them mm. without the kind of usual rigmarole that you might go through in terms of getting the funding and the permission to, to put them in place. Yeah. So the conditions changed to an extent that kind of these measures that might have already been thought about were, were quite quickly implemented. Mm. Given that you, you were looking at the two areas here, you know, Lancashire and, and, and Sheffield, um, was there anything, any lessons that came out particularly in relation to a place-based decarbonisation of transport. One of the lessons, which probably is one of the more general lessons, is that um, whilst Lancashire had a bigger list, they were dispersed and, and, you know, lots of people said we didn't use it because they weren't near us. And, and so if you're going to do this, it's, it's, it's almost not worth doing piecemeal. You've got, mm. to, you've got to put in a network so that people can get from where they want to go to, you know, from home to where they want to go. And, and, uh, and, and you know, but doing bits and pieces, people will go a certain distance out of their way to, to use a traffic free or a greener route or whatever, but, it, but it, that's limited. And it was definitely obvious in this that, you know, quite, quite a number of people just said, um, yeah, I, I knew about these, these interventions but they didn't go where I, I was going, you know, they're not near my usual route. Mm. And so that just, they just didn't get used. Um, and I think the ones that were 
best used and the one in, in Preston which has become permanent which is the one which links Penwortham to um, Preston um, is it, really popular because it's a quite a large residential area to the south of the river with virtually the city centre so I'm falling over here mm. um, so that that you know that get, got more use so I think I think in terms of you, yeah you do have to look at what's needed um but but to you know eat and each area is different i i think there is there is more cycling going on in places where where there's there's that that background of, of cycling activity of active, of active travel promoting active like Sheffield, mm. and it just it hasn't happened in in lancashire but you can increase it you know if you pick the right intervention um uh, and and in the, you know in the right place linking the right things, but I think piecemeal. I get the impression piecemeal doesn't work. And, yeah. And, yeah. Um, then of course it just gets pulled uh, because nobody's using it, and and the naysayers get to say, well, it didn't work, and we told you so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, and a particular gripe of mine, you, you don't have to put this one in. Um, but is is the the we we seem to still approach this very much from an engineering perspective, um, and put it in where we can, not where we need it. That, that's the problem. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I think that's 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 often often the case. One of the things we asked about was um, the what would help people, what would encourage people to travel more actively. Um, so in terms of kind of cycling, it, it was quite there was quite similar responses in terms of kind of uh what the main motivate you know the main thing that would help people to cycle more in Lancashire and Sheffield uh, was kind of improved or segregated cycle lanes because that's kind of a big thing for people um so it's kind of 50 percent in Lancashire had that as their their primary uh primary issue 58 percent in Sheffield so kind of quite similar numbers and then we also asked about um whether people would favour streets in towns or cities being designed more for um, pedestrians over kind of cars and, and other traffic. And again, it was kind of 72% in Sheffield, 74% in Lancashire okay. favoured that. So I think in terms of kind of people's um, perceptions of what we should be doing and, and kind of beliefs about what we should be doing, it was quite similar, um, even though maybe it was playing out differently in, in both places. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm asking this really as, as a, a cyclist who uses a lot of cycle lanes in this country and indeed when I go abroad. Did, did the quality of the infrastructure seem to matter in any way? Because, I mean, often you just get a, um, a dirty road that no one's ever cleaned for a long time with a white line paint, painted a, a metre and a half away from the side. All the debris and the drains and the glass are there and that's allocated as a, as a cycle lane. And you see that compared to other places where it's, you know, it's 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 a much more reasonable lane to expect with the cycling. But did that come out at all in your um, your questioning? We didn't we didn't go into that level of detail in terms of asking about the the different measures. Um, one thing we did it, it might exist in the um, the kind of more qualitative answers that we we had, but it's not not something we we okay. we've looked at specifically. But because we did ask people to say whether they'd use the measures and what they thought about them in terms of kind of the quality so whether it was excellent good down to poor um, and there was a bit of a trend in that the measures that were used more frequently um, tended to have higher median ratings amongst those that had used them so the the most most frequently used measures were kind of rated excellent uh, on average um, whereas the measures that were used to a lesser extent were tended to be kind of rated as good. Um, mm. So there is a kind of a potential kind of link between, um, yeah, the quality of the, the perceived quality of the, the measure that, that was put in place as part of the temporary road space relocation and, and what people thought of them. Uh, and I guess whether that kind of reinforces people's use of them and maybe uh, encourages more people to use them as well. Uh, but that was kind of the extent to which we looked. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah.